Okay, so good evening and welcome everyone to the Indian Republic Day special of Naveda's 80 is the new 50 webinar panel discussions. I am Veena Dansingani, founder and director of Naveda Integral Wellness Center, which is the first value-based integral wellness center in Asia Pacific, offering a transformative health experience to its clients. But Naveda has launched 80 is the new 50, panel discussion on the 21st of January, 2021, which was just last week. So a campaign which is inspired by our director, Mr. Lal Dirinani, who turns 80, or should I say 50, oh. in, the, in April this year, and really does not look and feel his age. In fact, just to share with all, today, the countdown starts. 80 days to 50. So today is exactly 80 days to his birthday. All right. So as we know that life expect expectancy has increased and we see people living up to the ages of 80 and 90 plus these days. However, many people of this age go through many physical, mental, emotional, social, and spiritual challenges. Um, some physical and mental challenges like dementia, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, arthritis, depression, loneliness, heart diseases, and more. So as we, we have, you know, uh, three very good examples over here. Today is India's Republic Day, and I'm sure they must have witnessed how things have transformed in India, but not only in India, generally how it's been growing and developing, but also how healthcare has transformed, uh, what kind of facilities we have these days. But at the same time, also we can see how diseases have emerged as well. So it's a perfect discussion today uh, to really, uh, you know, the, the whole motive and inspiration behind this entire campaign is to inspire, to really inspire the 50 plus to take on their health in their own hands so that they can enjoy living their lives the next 20, 30, 40 years, whatever it is, to the best of their ability. All right? So let's learn from the wise and young at heart what their secrets are to live an active, healthy, happy, aging life. And what is it that keeps them motivated in life? And how do they overcome some of their physical and health challenges, if any? So we're so happy and honored to welcome our guests to the panel discussion on this very interesting and meaningful topic on active and healthy aging. So we have, I'm going to introduce the entire panel so that you all know each other. So we have Mr. KP Daswani. Um, he is a trustee, currently he's a trustee of the Central Chinmaya Mission Trust worldwide. He's also the founder, chairman of Overseas Indian Business Association. And currently he's retired and he conducts few study groups on the Bhagavad Gita and much more, which he will be sharing with us later. We have Mr. Isha Rupani from Dubai. He is the founder director of Blue Water Real Estate and has lots, many passions and interest in his life that keeps him young, young and act, active, which we will again also learn from. Um, we have Faye Lawland from New Zealand. So she is New Zealand. Zealand's trusted internal conflict resolution expert. Uh, I am meeting her for the first time today. We have been Facebook friends. And uh, thank you so much for being here from New Zealand at 2 a.m. Is it 2 a.m. right now? <laughs> it's 2.15 now, yeah. <laughs> yes, so thank you for coming up at this time. And we will learn a lot more about you. And of course, we have Dr. Sanjay Navakar who is Naveda's in-house scientist. Uh, of course, last but not least, we have Mr. Lal Dirinani, who's our campaign ambassador, who has been an inspiration to all of us and many around the world. And I'm sure many of his friends over here would say the same. So a big welcome once again to our guest panel. And thank you so much for offering your precious time to share your wisdom and knowledge and thoughts on the subject. Uh, next person we have over here, next guest we have is Faye Loan from New Zealand. All right. So first of all, again, thank you so much for accepting our invitation to be on this panel discussion. 
and it is in the middle of the night, I know, but you look very beautiful and awake, actually. So you must, you must be an early riser for sure. Thank you. Thank you to the LED lights, uh, Vina. <laughs> I have one of those LED lights in front of me. <laughs> so I'm just going to pin you here. Uh, I'm going to add pin and remove. Yes. So what inspired you to say yes to this discussion in the middle of the well, night? Well, first of all, namaste, everyone. It's a real privilege to be among such wisdom and such a community of experienced people doing life in a very talented and very graceful way. It just, I feel like I just woke up after a long sleep. So really, really great to be with you as part of this discussion. Um, I guess what inspired me to say yes to this is a real sense of contributing to the wellness and the well-being of those around us and I feel like right now this planet is in so much need of all messages of encouragement and inspiration and there's something around the title of 80 is the new 50 that really 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 resonated and more and more because I actually just turned 50 so I don't know does that make it the new 20 or the new 30 I don't know <laughs> For one, I for one have felt feel better now at 50, happier and actually healthier than I was in my 20s and my 30s and even in my early 40s, honestly and seriously, because I really made drastic changes in my life around the time that I turned 40 and I started applying all those things that we've been talking about. And a big part of the turnaround in my journey and my wellness journey and my happiness journey was a year sabbatical in India. So, you know, being part of this here today is very close to my heart. And I was immersed in the yoga philosophy and the yoga psychology and yoga ashrams. And I have such reverence for the wisdom of ancient, of ancient India. And those teachings are very, very much a part of, they continue to be a part of my daily life. And I feel my journey towards expanding my happiness and expanding my sense of purpose and expanding my sense of meaning. You know, earlier you've said something about purpose and um, until I went to India, I went to India at, at 41, at the age of 41, my life was uh, really uh, crumbling all around me. All areas of my life came tumbling down and eventually it manifested in my physical health. And usually that's kind of when we wake up, if we are to have a wake up call, it's when our health goes, you know, massively downhill. And mine went massively downhill, but a little voice inside of me told me that I need to go to India in order to further my studies of yoga, because at the time, the only uh, thing that was um, um, kind of uh, uh, keeping me well was my practice of yoga. So I thought, I want to go and learn what is it about this thing about yoga that really is bringing so much into my life. Little did I know that it had nothing to do with the head stunt. <laughs> Little did I know. But one thing became very clear. I quickly started to feel, you know, those things that we all want to feel here on our human life and on our human body. I quickly started to feel happy and easeful and peaceful and, and purposeful actually purposeful because my life was lacking so much purpose and when your life lacks purpose and direction you are your your internal life is a disaster your emotional landscape is so unhealthy and also your physical health also suffers and I heard something in India at the ashram that stuck with me and I repeat this now to all my clients because you know I have a wellness business now and one of the gurus at one of the ashrams where I stayed said to us that the, uh, that, 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 uh, the purpose of life is actually finding, connecting to your true nature. Because our true nature is what you've all been describing, the happiness, the peace, the ease, the kindness, the compassion. Sorry, the meaning of life is discovering that, but the purpose of life is expressing it to the world around you. And I find that there's so much wisdom in that, that the purpose of our life is actually sharing who we are, sharing our life experiences and sharing all of our internal resources and internal wisdom with, the, with those around us. And now more than ever in the climate in which we find ourselves in in the world, that ability to share 
who we are, what we've learned, uh, how we can improve our collective experience, I think now more than ever is so necessary. And those are those little things that kind of keep me really happy. That knowledge, you know, the, that knowledge that I acquired in India keeps me happy and purposeful. And I'd like to feel healthy with a capital H like you described issue in mind, body and spirit. So I know that was a long winded response, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like I said, you know, I, I've never met you before. I've uh, hardly spoken to you. So I, I was just, my question was going to be, please share something about yourself. And that's what you exactly did. But <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you do? It's, would you like to share? What do you do? And sure. sure. So I recently set up a wellness business of my own, which was a combination of my own journey of massive internal conflict. And so right now what I do is I'm an internal conflict resolution expert. So I work with professionals who are exhausted, who are burnt out, who are anxious, who are depressed, who are purposeless and directionless. And I help them get back on track again. I help them to feel happier and healthier, calmer and more, more confident by resolving those internal conflicts that block them from being that truly purposeful, happy, innately calm person that they want to be. Because internal conflict, you know, whether we want to admit it or not, are very much part of all of our journeys. You know, we all acquire, you know, internal limitations through our life journeys. Internal limitations that manifest either as, you know, emotions that haven't been dealt with or life events that haven't been looked at or thought patterns and limiting beliefs that are getting in the way. And as we work through those easily and effortlessly, that true nature just kind of like arises, spontaneously arises, and magically life transforms. And um, it's a, such a pleasure and such an honor to do the work that I do. I can't even begin to express to you that. And so I see myself as I continue the journey in my life, whether we want to call it aging or whatever, I see myself just continuing to, to give back in what totally changed my life in, on every level. Mm. Yeah. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Amazing. Yeah. So like, like, like yourself, I, I also my, myself have gone through such a journey as well. Like you said, you know, internal conflicts, not knowing who I am, what I'm doing, what's my purpose. And I, yes, I guess many of us go through that, that same thing. Yeah. Okay. You know, there's something, there's something, the thing that you said, what, what prompted me to say yes. So it's everything that I said, but most recently, uh, you know, I have an aging father, I have an aging aunt, and I have an aging mother-in-law. And unfortunately, all of them are not aging in the way that, well, they're aging in the way that we see most people aging out there. And so my husband and I have this like, conscious discussion regularly about what can we be doing differently? Because we don't want that to be our life experience, you know? And that, that inspires a lot of conversations. But among those conversations also, we've been coming across many examples of people aging well and aging with purpose. You know, discussions like this, but also more and more you see in the media and more and more you see, um, you know, in movies and in documentaries, you see a lot of inspirational stories and inspirational people doing really incredible things to their 70s, in their 80s, and in their 90s. And I think the more we see of that, the more we have examples of what it means, what it looks like actually to age with grace and to age happily. Because I don't know about you guys. Well, I, I really don't know, but like just speaking about myself, until about the past four or five years, when my mindset around aging started to shift, I actually believe that inevitably the aging process is one that kind of is very depressing, is very limiting, and is one to be feared and one to be avoided and rejected. But it's only as I started expanding my thinking that I started seeing different experiences of people doing aging in a very empowering and very inspiring way. And I think conversations like this are amazing and they must continue. And that's the biggest reason why I said yes to this conversation. So 
kudos for an 80 is the new 50. <laughs> the new 20. <laughs> so going on to that, so what tips, uh, would love to hear from you, what tips would you like to share on active aging to, the, to give seniors to stay fit? Uh, they could be <laughs> To stay no, fit, no. guys, or to manage stress. Right. I, I feel I feel I'm better placed to talk about managing stress. I don't feel that I'm well placed to be advising senior because I feel like people who are more advanced on their journey are doing are doing so well. I feel I need to be taking lessons from them. But in terms of in terms of dealing with stress, I feel I can talk about that because that's a central part of the work that I do is I help professionals to transform stress, not to manage it. Because you guys, the issue is, see, the thing is stress is not the problem. It really is not the issue. It really is not. It's the mindset around stress that says we need to manage it, that keeps us locked into states of avoidance because stress can actually be a source of fuel. It can be a source of energy. It can actually serve to connect you to a sense of purpose. Because if you stop to think about the things that create stress for you, those stressful episodes or those stressful moments actually point back to things that you care about, things that provide meaning into your life. You would not be stressed about something that does not matter to you. You wouldn't be. And that's where that mindset component is critical about everything, about stress, about aging, about menopause, you name it. So... A big thing around dealing with stress is actually moving away from the need to manage it because I see it all around me these days. We all are told, oh, you need to manage your stress because stress is the problem. So I see it, you know, my clients come to me, they're already doing their diaphragmatic breaths and they're going for their exercise and they're going for their yoga and they're even using the meditation apps, but they're still stressed. And that begs the question then, if you're doing all the stress management techniques, why are you still stressed? And what I've come to discover in my work is the reason that that persists is because the mindset of stress is bad and needs to be avoided is paramount. And that we haven't, and we haven't been adopting that sense of stress is, uh, is to be transformed. That actually, if you embrace stress as a source of fuel and purpose and meaning, and you transform it, it just puts you in a different relationship with stress, right? Because if you start to think about what you do when you transform something, you're shifting it, right? Whereas if you're managing it, you're avoiding it. It's like you're just coping. So again, it's a different mindset around transforming stress instead of managing it. And then the third part of that, which I think is crucial at any age, but especially if you're experiencing a lot of stress, physical, emotional, and right now global stress. And all of us right now on the planet, all 7 billion of us are in stress mode because what's happening on the planet is not normal. It's, 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 it's creating a lot of unfamiliarity in our nervous system. And so the importance of resetting the nervous system during and after episodes of stress is critical. And I think where a lot of chronic conditions nowadays show up and persist is because of that last piece. We're not taking enough time. We're not building enough opportunities and time into our day, into our week, into our life to reset the nervous system, to recharge after the busy day, after the, the charged week at work, after the big uh, 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 deadline, after a really difficult conversation we're not doing that and the thing is we are equipped our brain is equipped with the capacity to reset after stress but we override it and that's where a lot of us fall into um, uh, spaces of cro uh, 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 chronic chronic stress conditions that end up dealing into chronic conditions like chronic pain chronic insomnia chronic anxiety so on and so forth and so those are like the three tips for remedying or dealing with stress. Stop managing it, start transforming it, and reset the nervous system. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. wonderful. Uh, that um, brings me to any, anything else to share? Anything that you have picked up from this discussion? 
<laughs> I've picked up so much from this discussion. I would like to echo something that Isha said around social media and technology. I think a really, really, and the, the word balance has been floated around a lot here. And one thing I know for sure in my journey, in my journey of um, uh, 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 towards happiness and towards internal peace, it is essential to balance what we do with technology and with social media. It's, it's actually critical and crucial. And I think as, you know, as things continue progressing with technology and with artificial intelligence and where we're going right now with the direction of technology, if we want to remain truly connected to our, inter to our capacity for, for living happy lives, purposeful lives, connected lives, we need to find a way to balance out how we interrelate and, 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 and interface with technology and with the social media. It's so important because you know our brain, it does something to our brain. And we know that a healthy brain is essential in aging well and aging happily and aging gracefully. And now the research around the young kids who are starting early with the social media and the technology is pointing to a totally different brain structure, not just brain function. That overuse and early interfacing with technology and social media is actually changing the structure of the human brain at such an early age, which means that the way these young kids are relating to the world at a young age is really changing. And I don't know whether it's changing in the right direction. I would really, you know, I, I'm not sure about that. So, so important to manage that. And I think on here, we have an understanding of the importance of that because we all have life experience that predates the screen. We know what it's like to actually pick up the phone. We know what it's like to have a conversation where you're looking at the other person and not hiding behind the screen. But for those that don't, weren't born in those times, weren't fortunate enough to be born in those times, I can't stress the importance of that message enough. That if you want those states of peace and wellness and well-being, and I know that you do because we all do as human beings, then it's so important to balance out how you, how you relate to the social media and the technology. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much. For so this mm. song is more on unselfishness. So it talks about that I should be I should be falling over what with your smile. You are smiling, and I'm feeling the energy. I'm falling over your smile, and then if you are in pain, I'm taking the pain to myself. I'm taking the pain. Okay, you see because that we is? coexist. We don't exist in a vacuum. Yeah, yeah. And then the next thing is that. For whatever reason, as long as you have love for others, love for others, this is what life is all about. Capital L. Dina Isika Name. Thank you. Happy hey, Uncle, any last words? Thank you, thank you. We have learned a lot from each other, right? Let us let us remember what we have learned and love. Love is the final solution. There mm -hmm. is no other solution except to see myself in the others. So in reality, there is no other. That's really, true. there is no other. I alone am reflecting in everyone. So that's it. Beautiful. So can we just smile for a photo taking session right now? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hi. Let me see. Did I get it right? Here you go. Take it. Say cheese. <laughs> Okay. There you go. Thank you Thank so much you. for being here. Thank, Thank you for your time. You. And we look forward to catching up once again. And if you know anyone in your lives who are leading their lives very successfully and actively aging, please reach out to us and we would love Thank to you. speak. Thank you. Thank you, Rina. Thank you for arranging this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kepi. Thank you, Ishu. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Go back to sleep, Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.